Right, Range Rover Sport L494. We've had a fun week, haven't we, with this title? Yeah. Yes. Very Not fun. Really. It's been a tale of sadness. But anyway, I'm going to share what I have learned about the fuel system. So this is all about, so we've got the lovely V8 here. We've removed the engine cover because we're going to tell you a story here. So it all started because we wanted to do one of these YouTube videos. Apparently they're all the rage, aren't they, Tyler? Apparently wouldn't know anything about it. any rubbish you put up there, or so it seems. So we thought we'd put a video up. We were going to get the Defender. Jet going over we got we're gonna have the defender with zero range of fuel and we're gonna have our sport v8 five litre with zero range of fuel go up to the petrol station put 20 quid in each and drive them around a little route and get them back to base and see which one had the, the range left to get a comparison of how much range but this one had loads of fuel in it. I didn't want to just drive it round loads because that would be unenvironmentally friendly and that'd be bad on it Tyler yeah yes so I thought, why don't Tyler, why don't you just <laughs> use our vacuum pump and, and suck it out? He had nothing to do. He was sitting there with his feet up. So, he wasn't really. Um, so I said, well, look, 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 we've got fuel supply pipes here, Tyler. I said, well, why don't we just work out one of these is feed and one of these return. Why don't we work out which one's feed and return and then we'll just suck it out the tank and then we can get on and do our video. He said, good idea, Simon. You're the boss. You know it all. But it turns out I didn't, as you'll find out. So we disconnected them both. We turned the ignition on just for a fraction of a second and a little bit of fuel came out of this one. So we thought, ah, this must be the supply. This must be a return. So um, that was all good. Now, actually, right. So the first thing is, if you are playing with this fuel system, this is pressurized. To depressurize this, you need to remove, and we'll have a look in the back. Don't let me forget, Tyler. You have to remove the fuses for the fuel pump. Okay, which will, and then crank the engine over a little bit, it will rid, it will suck a bit of petrol, relieve the pressure, and then you can remove this clip and get it. Right, anyway, we digress. So, so we did that, we sucked the fuel out, and I said, well, don't suck too much out, and the gauge was still showing a third of a tank. So I said, well, let's stop there. Um, reconnected the pipe, put the fuses back in, start it it started up didn't it Tyler? yeah we first that. time first time before we've nailed this we've made it up as we've gone along and we got away with it again but then it stopped and it wouldn't stop um right so we then have come across two errors so i'll tell you what what we did wrong um right so basically the fuel we'll have a look at the the fuel system the feed pipe from the tank to the front here has got a pressure sensor in it and it sensed no pressure when I turned it on to feed it. And it thought, whoa, there's a problem here. I'm pumping and there's no resistance to my pumping. So there's actually an ECU that sits on top of the fuel tank that controls the fueling. And it then locked it out. It locked the fuel pump, the lift pump that's in the tank locked out. Right, so then we have to get that reset. Now, our IID wouldn't do it or did have an option to it. Um, so we had to get in contact and we rang a local specialist and he's like, no, I don't know how to unlock the fuel pump and reactivate it. And we had the snap on gear and I'll put the videos at the end of me trying to work that out. Some people will find that interesting, but I'll tack that on the end of the video. Um, but basically we used the snap on gear, the snap on gear, I did the live readings and I could see the fuel pump was disabled. And I disconnected the battery, reconnected the battery, tried all the normal tricks and it still remain disabled. So you have to get some pretty tricky diagnostics. The snap-on gear couldn't do it, but IID wrote me a special bit of code that they're now gonna release because I've tested it on my car to re-enable the fuel pump. Now re-enabling the fuel pump is the first part of the problem. The second part is you then need to run a fuel priming routine. So they then wrote that for me as well. So basically in it, then it activates the pump and then it opens some trickery in the high pressure pump under there and you can hear it going <laughs> and the fuel goes and it purges all the air out and after we did that it all started so we it took that that's about a week's worth of nightmare though wasn't it Tyler right in a few seconds so I thought why don't I share some other stuff with you about the fuel so there we've covered the fuel lines right let's go and have a look at the fuel pump Tyler right then so if you take out your back seats don't discard them casually on the tarmac. Put them somewhere nice. Um, and I'll do a separate video. Can you do the little pointy thing, Tyler? Right. 
There you go. Look, I'm appeared here. So if you take out your back seat and jump into your car, you will notice there's a little bit here. And here, this is where the fuel pump lives under here. So if you need to replace your in-tank fuel pump, this is what you need to sort of do. Now this bit, rubber bit, if you squeeze it together in the middle and give it a little pull, it, there you go, that comes up higher. So you've got these little four clips around here. So that's a little bit that comes out there. Oh, I think I've worked out where. Right, and then this bit here sort of lifts out. It's got some clips on it. Right, it's got these just little clips. And then you can see under here, right then, if I can, let me see if I put that there through there. Does that give us a bit more? Wiggle room. Wiggle room, we can see what's going on. So here you can see we've got the main power supply to the fuel pump and I've got this extra bonus cable I found. I don't know what that does. Now, that I think was perhaps for the side steps. Now, bear in mind, this is my project Range Rover Sport L494 that was crash damaged and has been put together rather dodgily. So ignore that. But this is interesting. This is the pressure sensor here that, that senses the pressure in the fuel line. And this is the one that dobbed me in, grasped me up and caused me all my problems. I hate you. But right then. No, nothing personal. Um, right, now the other interesting thing is, let's go, let's, oh, what should we do next, Ty? Should we go to the blackboard and explain why, why did it say we had a third of a tank and we actually had no petrol, did we? We yeah. go and do that and then at the end, remind me, Tyler, and we'll go in the back and do those fuses so people know where the fuses are in the back. Right, let's jump on. Let's go. Back. I'm as tall as you now, Tyler, all right. Well, Maybe. Um, right, so the fuel tank's a bit weird. So, so we've got a fuel tank, right, but it, it's shaped a bit, like this, like, and the prop shaft is the culprit. The prop shaft goes through the middle. Now, when your tank is full, it's no problem. Um, it's all one tank. But as your tank gets lower, you end up with two individual levels of fuel. Now, on the spot, and but you only have one fuel pump, and the fuel pump sits in one side. We just saw that, and that was the top of that little bit we saw there. Now. The fuel pump sucks this fuel up through a little filter here. Now the problem is that you can see it would empty this one and leave some in there. So it's got a little bit of trickery and witchcraft. And what it has is a little pipe that goes over here and goes in here. And it uses a thing called venturi apparently. And venturi is when you sort of blow on the top of a straw and it sucks water up. I don't know if you've ever done that trick. Yeah. But basically, as this pump is pumping petrol up here, it sucks some petrol up from that and it must do it in equal measure so for every bit that goes up there it sucks them out of there so these two drain now on the early L322s the earlier Range Rover the L322 apparently they had a separate pump to pump from this half and apparently there was some wiring issue and that so if your gauge shows you've still got a third of a tank of fuel but you run out of petrol it's because this secondary pump mechanism on the L322 is failing. And Craig says, that's Craig at Camtech who knows everything. He said, the problem's not actually normally the pump, it's the wiring, but we digress again. So this apparently uses the Venturi pump. So what was happening was that, I think there's two senders, one in, if we change color. Is anyone, is anyone still watching this joke? Oh, they watch any old crap on YouTube. They do. Right then. So there's apparently a sender here and a sender here, and it averages the two. So I think what happened was this one was saying we've still got half a tank left because we hadn't sucked it out. Because when we sucked it, we sucked it through the pipe and I think it just sucked this one out. But this one was saying he was empty, so it averaged it out and said we had a third. So we actually had three problems. <laughs> we sucked all the fuel out, even though the fuel gauge said it was a third. We caused the fuel pump to deactivate and we had to do the purge to purge the air out. So we managed to monumentally poop up, didn't we, Tyler? We, we really yeah. did, but we've learned a lot. So that's the fuel pump, that's what you've got. You've got one pump, you've got two gauges. So if your car runs out at a third and runs out of fuel, you've got a problem with this bit here. Right, last but not least, we've got to go and look at those fuses, haven't we? Let's go. Yeah, and I also ought to say that running your car out of petrol, we nearly did that with the Defender the other day, is generally a bad idea. Uh, it's even worse on diesels, apparently. I think a lot of this applies to the diesel, um, but I haven't ripped a diesel car apart, so I don't know. Um, 
but diesels are particularly bad if you run the pumps dry apparently the seals use the diesel as lubrication and the seals and everything goes wrong so it's not recommended right we're looking for the now where is how does this work Tyler we've got this panel here comes out I don't know, I think. Oh. now I think mine's been out like a million times <laughs> so it should have two proper clips and you may have to give it a fairly fierce tug but don't like it's got nothing at the bottom has it Tyler no it's got those two at the top there so I think you've got a right and this will expose this little now if you dive under here at this angle Tyler you will notice hidden under this rear fuse box they give you a little they make it impossible for you to find you got to do a treasure hunt before you can even get to your fuses look at that right and then if you've got this if you haven't Tyler will zoom in nicely I'll hold it the right way up why not Right, now these three here seem to be fuel pumps to me. So you've got fuse 45, 46, and 47, which live, oh, you've got better eyes than me, Tyler. What does it say? 45, that blue yeah. one there, that green one there, and that other blue one there. So those three there are the ones you need to pull out. Now, I'm not, it's probably got three, I'm guessing. I'll make all this up. I reckon it's got one for the ECU that sits on top of the fuel tank. I reckon it's got one for the pump itself and it might even have a separate one for the fuel senders. I don't know, I haven't played what... <laughs> I'm not playing with any more on this fuel system. I'm done, I'm done with fuel system. Anyway, that's waffling. I've done some nice pictures um, of that. I'll put those in now while I'm wittering on. And also, what else have we done? What else have we done? Oh yeah, so now I'll tag on those bits of where we're doing some of the fault finding and we're in somewhat anguish as to whether we can fix our, our, our Range Rover or not. So I hope that all makes some sense when you watch those clips now. All right, good luck with that. We'll get on and we'll do this. We'll do the video for how to remove these seats, shall we, Tyler? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Right, one other thing that just came that I've forgotten to mention was if you need to take your fuel tank out, you need to sort of knock this with a hammer and rotate it and you can see that little that little groove there's gripping it when it goes into this bigger bit it'll all move around and you can lift it out obviously you've got like a million cables and that but the official way i i did read the workshop manual afterwards and it said the official way to drain fuel is to take that out put something in there and suck it out but i'm still confused because you'd have to you just still only suck it out of one side you'd have to make sure you put some tube in over to the other side under here to sort of get that bit out the other side of the prop shop so if you're messing around with fuel it's it's pretty complicated um as i've proven right we'll put all this back together now right this is a story of woe and disaster so my lovely range Rover sport five liter supercharged right bam but i had too much petrol in this one i didn't want to drive it just for the sake of it so i'll have a go at taking some petrol out so I had a look and it's quite tricky, but then I spotted these fuel lines here. So I thought, well, I'll just tap into a fuel line and suck it out. And that all worked fine. But in doing so, to work out which was feed and return, I turned the ignition on. Now it turns out there's a fuel pressure line sensor on this low pressure fuel line. And it goes, uh oh, there's something wrong. And it's disabled the fuel pump. So now I want to start it. I can't start it. So we're trying, I've got everyone helping me trying to work this out. So basically there's two potential problems. Actually, I mean, it did start and it ran for about 10, 20 seconds and then it cut out. Obviously it just had some petrol in the system. Now this is bad because you can have problems with the seals and stuff. So I'm feeling a bit silly right now, but such is life. Um, you don't, you can't make an omelet without breaking an egg sometimes. So um, now I've got the IID tool and the guys at IID now, so when you start the car or open the door, you normally, normally hear the little fuel pump in the back go, um, but that's not happening. And I, I've diagnosed this before, so when I put this on, I'll... Right, so I've plugged it in the ODB port. Um, let's have a... Go scanner. Right, and then you've got to select your make. Land Rover. Now it should auto-identify. Sorry about the binging. Let me shut my door. Find the cable. Right. Um please ensure the battery voltage is good. Continue. All right, and it'll automatically detect the car if it's 2007 newer. Make sure the scanner's on. 
There we go. I'm not sure how good the picture is. It's quite reflective, this screen. Okay, here it goes. Oh, it should tell me what my car is. There you go. It's the Range Rover Sport V8 petrol. Yep, so we can go okay. Now, the fuel pump is in the back under the seat, and the official way, it turns out, of draining your fuel if you need to is to take up the back seat and i will try and add on the end of this video if not do another video of how to access your fuel pump on these cars because they are going to start failing sooner or later um so let's have a look if i go into engine let's have a look okay ecus and i really need to i think it was live data i went into let's have a look data All right, and fuel and emissions. It's collecting the data from the vehicle. And then if I scroll down, you see the parameters it's telling me here. And one of these said fuel pump enabled, disabled. Still going down. Flow, fuel level, fuel pressure, fuel pump control. Yeah, this is what worries me here. As it's saying here, if I get it in the right place, look, fuel pump disabled, disabled. Um, now, whether that means fuel pump disabled is disabled, so it's like a double negative, or it's enabled, I don't know. Um, but, yeah, it's not looking too good. So, I, the guys at IID have written me another... They've Right, so two things we've got to do is, one, we've got to reactivate the fuel pump. And secondly, we've got to bleed the air out of the system. And there is a bleed procedure. So I'm going to get the IID tool in here now, upload the new software they've done for me. And I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll try and do this, see if we can get this enabled here. All right, quick video on how to update the IID tool. So if you get it and plug it in with a little USB connector here, and it should flash when if you've got a good cable. It didn't. Right, here it goes. All right. Got another cable here. Let's try this one. That should. There you go. It should flash. So make sure it flashes. There you go. There's one. And then if we go find device now, it should find device. Okay. Now, so what we're doing here is the guys at IID have written a new bit of firmware for me to test. We're working with them on this problem I've got on my Range Rover Sport. And so they know which tool it is and they will uploader so they've done a new to fuel pump enable so if you select the the software they've asked you to upload and then if you go onto this program firmware bit here and click on that and what it'll say is the iid tool is going to be updated so continue yes and then it'll do its thing there it's updating the firmware there's some lights going on on it right? not a big green light going on Oh, red light going on. Okay, so you also need to update your phone section of the software. Okay, so if you get your phone, and let me just sort my phone out, and then go to your gap diagnostics here. Okay, and then if you search for tool on your thingy, search for tool. And then it will gather and it will force you can't do anything it forces you because it knows it's updated it and it forces you to update there's only one thing you can select confirm connection yeah so there we go and now that's up to date so now i can go and try unplug this and try this in the car so uh, fingers crossed this will sort me out right so here it goes so let's try this fuel priming routine here uh, proceed with this so this should purge all the air out which you'll have to do if you if you went if you run your car dry or have a problem maybe even if you change your fuel pump or any of the fuel line so there we go it's switching the ignition off switching the ignition on i can hear the pump come on in the boot this is a gentle whirring noise
That says it's done that successfully. Uh, but my battery's a bit flat, so I'm going to wait 20 minutes and let's see if we can try it again. Right, so the, we used the IID tool, we did the prime, we did the enabling, and we verified that that is enabled. Um, it still didn't start, but in the end, the interesting thing is, the fuel tank was showing a third full. Now, it turns out it was sucking up no fuel. I checked the fuel lines at the front, and it was checking, it was sucking up no fuel. So I put another 10 litres of fuel in, ran the primer operation, and now it starts. So, 